Welcome to Life Lessons with Sheila and welcome back to another Sweet Word Sunday. On Sundays, I like to share from my heart to yours some topic that had come up during the week or was requested by someone in my inner circle. If you like devotionals, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. And if you're new here, I'd love it if you would join my Love Bug family. Just hit that subscribe button. And if you'd like to be notified anytime I post a video, which are at least daily, post a short, which I do six times a day, or post a community post, which is done from 5 a.m. to 9 p.m. Central Standard Time to lend encouragement and inspiration to get you through your day, then hit that notification bell. Let's hop on into today's video, shall we? Weather the storm. I know I have been through many storms in my life, both, both physically as well as emotionally. Living on the Gulf Coast most of my life, we spend six months out of the year with the thought of a hurricane slipping in to mess up our everyday life. It is the uncertainty that comes with hurricanes that is the hardest to deal with because you never know where it will make landfall until it actually does. Even then, you don't know whether it will be more of a windstorm, a rainstorm, or an equal amount of damage from both. The first hurricane I remember dealing with was Hurricane Alicia, which hit the Galveston-Houston area in August of 1983. As I shared in a previous devotional, it totally took our house and dropped it on top of our boat. Then you had Hurricane Allison, which came in and flooded the area, though we stayed high and dry during that time. Much of the city of Houston did not. Hurricane Rita came the same year after Hurricane Katrina destroyed Louisiana, so I automatically thought it was wise to evacuate, though my husband did not. That year, many people lost their lives on the freeway trying to evacuate because everyone went into mass hysteria evacuating. It took me nine hours to drive a normal two-hour drive. <laughs> It was crazy. Turns out Rita didn't do much damage, but had a power outage for a few hours in my area. It had gone up to where I had evacuated too and caused a lot of pine trees to be wiped out, causing it difficult to make it back home for a few days. Hurricane Ike kicked us out of our house because we lost power for almost three weeks. Thankfully, my husband's sister and husband had a whole home gas re-generator, so it became a family reunion for all of us. Thankfully, our home had no damage. Then, of course, came Hurricane Harvey, which was a huge flood event for the entire Gulf Coast from Galveston through Winnie and even into Houston. The last storm that came through was Hurricane Nicholas, which came through when I was in the hospital. Thankfully, it didn't cause any damage to our area. So you can say I've had some history with some hefty storms. I've also dealt with the emotional kind from the time I lost my paternal grandmother to my maternal grandmother, my sister, my mother, a sister-in-law, my mother-in-law, and of course, lastly, my husband. So to say I've been through the storms would be an understatement. Matthew 8, 6 tells us, he replied, you of little faith, why are you so afraid? Then he got up, rebuked the winds and waves, and it was completely calm. After Hurricane Harvey, our roof needed to be replaced. That was the most damage that we had. Thankfully, when you buy a home along the Gulf Coast, you must have homeowner's insurance if your home is financed. If you live in a floodplain, then you're also required to have flood insurance. Thankfully, we are not. Like I have mentioned before, our home was built on an old rice field. If you don't know what rice fields are capable of, they hold a lot of water. In fact, once rice seed is planted, it has to be flooded in order for it to take and begin to grow. That is the one thing I truly believe saved our neighborhood. Neighborhoods all around us flooded. They had five feet of water inside their homes. It was crazy. Isaiah 41.10 reminds us, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. Even and especially with the emotional storms, the only thing that kept me going and not wanting to buckle under the pressure is my faith in God and knowing that I will never face anything that seems hard or what it feels like it's impossible alone. I will face them, but I will never face them alone. He promises that he will never give us more than we can handle. 
even though I question his judgment at the time of every loss. The one thing I have learned is that life is precious and none of us are going to escape this life alive. <laughs> Isaiah 43.2 says, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. So how do we weather the storms in life? Weathering this storm in life simply means navigating and overcoming challenges, adversity, and difficult times with resilience and strength. Life is full of ups and downs, and it's essential to develop coping strategies to handle the storms that come your way. Here are some steps to help you weather the storms in your life. First is acceptance and acknowledgement. Acknowledge that challenges and difficult times are a natural part of life. Accept that you cannot control everything that happens to you, but you can control your response. Second, stay calm and maintain perspective. Keep your emotions in check and try to maintain a clear and rational perspective on the situation. Emotions are valid, but excessive panic or despair can cloud your judgment. Number three, problem solving skills. Identify the specific issues or problems you're facing. Break them down into manageable parts and create a plan for addressing them one step at a time. Number four, seek support. Reach out to friends, family, or a support network. Sharing your struggles and seek advice for comfort from others can make a significant difference. Number five, self-care. Take care of your physical and emotional well-being. This includes getting enough sleep, eating healthily, exercising regularly, and engaging in activities that bring you joy and relaxation. Number six, mindfulness and stress reduction. Practice mindfulness meditation or relaxation techniques to reduce stress and anxiety. These practices can help you stay grounded and focused during challenging times. Number seven, maintain a positive mindset. Cultivate a positive attitude and focus on solutions rather than dwelling on the problems. Remember that challenges can lead to personal growth and development. Number eight, set realistic goals. Establish achievable goals for yourself. These can provide a sense of purpose and direction during tough times. Number nine, learn and adapt. Consider every challenge as an opportunity to learn and grow. Adapt to changing circumstances and be open to new ways of thinking and doing things. Number 10, time management. Prioritize tasks and manage your time effectively to prevent feeling overwhelmed. Break down your responsibilities into manageable chunks and allocate time to each. Number 11, patience and resilience. Understand that storms in life may not pass quickly. Develop patience and resilience to endure and persevere through difficult times. Number 12, professional help. If you're dealing with severe mental health issues or overwhelming stress, consider seeking professional help from therapists, counselors, or support groups. Number 13, keep a supportive network. Cultivate and maintain positive relationships with people who provide emotional support, understanding, and encouragement. Number 14, reflect and learn. After the storm has passed, take time to reflect on what you've learned from the experience. This self-reflection can help you prepare for future challenges. Number 15, plan for the future. Use your experiences to plan for a more resilient future. Consider how you can better prepare for potential storms and build a strong foundation for yourself. Remember that everyone faces challenges in life and how you weather the storm often defines your character and resilience. It's okay to ask for help when you need it and it's essential to be patient and compassionate with yourself as you navigate difficult times. 2 Corinthians 4, 17 through 18 says, For our light and momentary troubles are achieving 
for us an eternal glory that far, out, far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. I'm going to read that one more time. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that for far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but as what is unseen, since what is temporary, what is seen is temporary, and what is unseen is eternal. Again, that was 2 Corinthians 4, 17 and 18. And you know, I have to leave you with the positive side of things, because in all honesty, if we don't focus on the positives in life, then what is the point in living? I came out of every experience changed, and changed for the better. I have learned compassion, how to lend a neighborly hand, come together closer as a family. In every storm we faced, we ended up in a better place in our life. After Harvey, my husband was brought back home from working out of state, earning more money than what he was making. After each loss in our family, the remainder of us became closer. My faith is stronger than it has ever been. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking for anything. That's in James 1, 2-4. Let's go to God in prayer, shall we? Dear Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for your undying love, for your protection, and for your unique way that you care for us. Thank you for being our insurance policy with that when life goes crazy, you are there to pick up the pieces. Thank you for the reassurance that you are always there one step ahead. I ask that you be the, with those who may be going through a storm of their own. Somehow, some way, let them know today that you are there for them. I ask for protection from any impending storms, both physically and emotionally. I also want to ask for food for the hungry, homes for the homeless, and love for the lonely. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. And amen. And I hope today's message hit home with you one way or another. And I hope if you are facing a storm that you stand firm, knowing that God's got your back. And he'll help you pick up the pieces along the way. He promised to never forsake you or leave you. And you've got to stand on those promises sometimes. Until next time. Bye.